Hello, this is John Mack. Welcome to Sunday, August 3rd's edition of Salt River Truth, where the facts run free. All right, today I opened my newspaper. Um, I love the Arizona Republic. I think it's a great newspaper. We're very lucky to have it. Um, every Sunday they, they have a theme and they publish multiple articles on that theme. The theme this week was the impact of our changing climate on um, our struggles to live in the West. And, and that got me to thinking about the Salt River. Um, as you know, I'm incredibly uh, devoted to the Salt River Riparian. I'm incredibly uh, in love with those wild horses and all of the animals. Uh, my heart uh, beats a little faster when I see a sheep or a deer, um, and especially when I see those wild horses. All right, so I did some data um, and just pulled up some numbers and tried to look at what's happening. All right, the first, the, the I guess it's yellow or orange, shows the, the average temperature um, in the Phoenix Valley from 1995 to 2024. Clearly, you can see that um, our average temperature, there, there is a graph here that shows that it's going up, right? Is that even though we have these sort of swings in um, precipitation, uh, we can see a consistency um, across. So unlike our temperature, which you can see is gradually going up, we do have then this sort of uh, bottom line, what's it at 6.6 .6 or 6.8 inches is the average from over the past 30 years. So what's different, however, um, is the impact of that rising temperature on the rain. Um, and so we certainly have more evaporation uh, and what's different as well, and I don't have a chart, but it's provable that our rains are coming at more irregular times, so we can't rely on a monsoon season, we can't rely on those winter rains like we might have done in the past. And when the rains come, statistically speaking, they're coming harder, they're coming with more impact, they're dropping more water, which then means there's more runoff. Um, also, these long dry periods then are, are making it so that much of that water is getting absorbed rather than filling um, our rivers and streams. And so we have to deal with that. Um, this is the no more normal. We are now living um, in uh, a, an area at, at a time when the temperatures are rising and we have uh, more inconsistency when it comes to uh, rainfall. We have, and what this means, of course, is that there can be no more normal when it comes to the Salt River horse herd. So if you look back over the last 10 years, um, since really this debate and the decision to keep these beloved horses and the, the decision to manage them, um, things have changed over the last 10 years. And we need to make sure that our management is based on these changes that we are adapting in our care for these animals even as we live in an adapting world. Um, so that means we can't base decisions on how things used to be. We have to respond to how things are now with rising temperatures and erratic rainfall patterns. The humane care means planning ahead, acting before overpopulation leads to hunger, suffering, or collapse, especially as recovery from dry cell spells becomes harder. Uh, none of us want to see starving horses. None of us want to see horses um, who do not have enough energy. None of us want to see horses who have become so accustomed to supplemental feeding that we can truly say the feeding is regular, not supplemental, because that changes the whole dynamic of what we love about wild horses. So therefore, we must evaluate herd size in light of what the land can sustainably support under today's warmer, less predictable conditions. All right, that means we have to face the facts, we have to act like adults, we have to put our emotional commitment to these animals to one side in order to say what is best for them over the long term. No more normal, let's move ahead and think in a way that guarantees their future. Learn more at saltrivertruth.com or join us on Facebook, Salt River Truth.